Access granted. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Greetings. Hello, 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 everybody. Greetings, peace, grace to you from Jehovah God, our Father, and Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hey, welcome to Harvest Temple Church of Restoration, uh, located right here in the heart of Chesapeake, Maryland. I say Shalom Baraka, peace and blessings to each and every one of you all that are joining us today. Hey, do me a big, big favor, if you will, when you get the opportunity, you get the chance. Please, uh, all my first time visitors that are watching today, do me a favor and take a screenshot, write it down, whatever you got to do, but make sure that you text the keyword welcome to 443-222-8922, right? Please do that for me. So, because uh, what I want to do is I want to bless you with a autographed copy of my book faith or fear and soon uh uh we're going to transition and we're going to switch it up a little bit and i'm gonna uh start uh signing and autographing and issuing out my latest book opposition releases opportunity but in the meantime in between time make sure if you're a first time visitor text that keyword welcome Four four three two 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 eight nine two two. Hey. Hey. So, once again, I want to welcome each and every one of you all. Welcome to the Harvest Broadcast, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to everyone. Because here at HTC Restoration, we strive to be a church for all people, ministering to meet the needs of all people. How, Pastor K, right where they are, through restoration in Christ. All right. <laughs> Hey, if you are just joining us and you didn't know, we're in a new series. Uh, this is week two, second week of our uh, mini series. This is going to be a three week series. And this is week two uh, of the Generous Life series. And so last week we started this series. And uh, we were looking at the life-changing power of being generous. Now, I already know y'all hear that word generous and generosity. Think of giving. When you think of giving, first thing comes to some of our minds is money. Generosity is like prosperity. It is more than money. You can be generous with your time. You can be generous uh with your thoughts you can be generous uh in various different ways as well as with your money but money is not all of generosity is not all of the generous life and that's what this teaching is all about is to help us better understand and to get out of our shallow thinking if you will when we hear certain words and, and and we associate certain words and certain things just to one thing. And we don't fully grasp and understand that it is more or there's a variety that is connected to it. Are y'all with me? And so we we discussed how something incredible happens when giving more than just your money becomes an idea and not a duty or an obligation. Yeah, he said duty. As you 
make giving a lifestyle you'll realize that you're not only loving life more but you're also creating a more generous world for you as well a better world for all of us and when you choose to live a life of generosity you begin to change and so does the world around you are y'all with me and so uh with this just being a three-week series, and we're in week two, uh, we're dealing with or we're talking about the pathway to the generous life. And it is simply this, awareness, action, impact. Put that in your notes. The pathway to generous living or the pathway to a generous life is awareness, action, and impact. And so Webster has the definition for generosity simply this, the quality of being kind, understanding, and not selfish. Wow, did y'all hear that? Webster's definition for generosity is the quality of being kind, understanding, and not selfish. It goes on to say the quality of being generous especially being willing to give money and other valuable things to others freely. Now, they could have just summed it up with their definition by saying generosity uh, is the quality uh, and being willing to give money and other valuable things to others freely. They could have just left it at that. But I like how they described it. Generosity is the quality, not the quantity, not in an amount, but it is the quality of being kind. When you're kind to somebody, you need to realize what kind of quality are you putting out there? What kind of quality of understanding when it comes to the needs of others, what is the quality that you are giving? Are you putting out in a quality of selfishness or are you putting out a quality of selflessness that it's not about you but that you see a need and you want to feel the need are y'all with me and so uh i've kind of taken webster's definition and i kind of summed it up for our series definition for generosity as you see here on the screen Generosity is a heart that is willing. Notice, you got to be willing to give. And when you're willing to give, it leads to a life that freely gives. Not grudgingly, not with an attitude, not out of duty, not out of an obligation, but you freely give. So, in other words, Jehovah God has a heart always willing to give, leading to a life that freely gives. In other words, God gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And what did Jesus do? Jesus freely paid a debt that he didn't even owe so that humanity, me, you, and every human being on the face of this planet would have an abundant life from a debt that we would never be able to pay. Are y'all with me? How you doing? All right. Listen, let me, for those of you all that are joining, let me give you a lesson review from uh, week two of where we were. Uh, last week, we discussed the first step to this generous life that we're talking about, and it is to become more aware of what's happening around you. You gotta have awareness. You gotta be aware uh, of the generous acts that are presented to us every day. And so we said that generosity is about being generous in a variety of ways. It ain't just about money. We got to get out of that shallow box of thinking 
that when we hear prosperity or we talk about money, no, the Bible says, God says that he wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. That ain't got nothing to do with money. He says he wants your soul to prosper. And see, if we can get that understanding of our soul prospering, we can be generous and we can be willing to give freely, not with an attitude, not grudgingly, nothing of that, but we will do it the way God did it. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world, regardless of the shape, fashion, and what was going on. He loved the world so much. He loved humanity, his creation so much that he gave us his only son. He gave freely his only son. And then his son freely gave up his life so that we may have both eternal life and an abundant life here on earth. Are y'all hearing me today? And so we said that generosity is about being generous in, variety, in a variety of ways. And if we stop for a minute and we think, and then we begin to apply these different ways, then we can understand how to be generous or better yet, helpful to humanity. We can be generous with our thoughts. We can be generous with our words, words of encouragement. Do your words help? And are your words bringing healing or are you tearing folks down with your words? Are you tearing people down with your attitude of, uh, of, of lack of gratitude, your complaining and things of that nature? Your words, the words that are coming out of your mouth, are they lifting people up or are they tearing people down? We can be generous with our thoughts, our words, our influence. We all have a sphere of influence that God has given to us. There are people, this is why I ask you to share uh, the, the service and share the broadcast. It's not as much to me as getting a bunch of people in here to watch me. No, it ain't about that. It's about getting this knowledge, this information that we're putting out. And so there are people that you are influenced and have reached that I can't reach, but through you, through your help, through your social media platform, all you do is hit that share button, invite them in, and we can do this together. Are you hearing me? And so we understand how to be generous or helpful to humanity, and we're generous with our thoughts, our words, our influence, our time. So you, you may not have the money, you may have more time on your hands than you do money. So what are you doing with the time? See, this goes back, like we said last week, when we talked about a little bit about the, the, uh, the scripture about tithing. Yeah, you might not have money to tithe. You might can't tithe your 10%, but you can give God your 10% in your time. Two hours and 40 minutes. Two hours, 40 minutes. That's what God requires for us to tithe back to him in time. He gives us 24 whole hours in a day. All he wants is two hours and 40 minutes. As Jesus said to the disciples, man, you can't even pray with me for one hour. If you can't even pray for, pray with, pray for one hour, let alone give God two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, wow. But we can be generous with our time. We can be generous to others with our attention. How much attention do you pay to uh, what's going on around you? Uh, or how much attention do you pay on the phone rather than seeing that you're about to walk and fall into a pothole or you're about to walk out into traffic, but you so wrapped up, you're so, uh, your attention is so full on uh, checking your social media, uh, or checking that email, but you don't, you're not aware of what's going on around you. But yet we can be generous with our attention. We can also be generous with 
stuff or with our belongings. Have you ever packed up them clothes that might be too small, too big, and gave them away or, or took them to the Goodwill or put them in one of those drop boxes? That's being generous with your belongings. And then last but not least, we can also be generous with our money. So those of us that's out there, and you know who I'm talking to, you sitting there making that six, you got that six figure income, you can be generous in all these areas as well as with your money. But when we hear generosity, we hear uh, uh, giving or being generous, then we think and, and we, we, we associate it right off the bat with, oh, they, they, they asking for some money. People could be asking you to donate your time, your attention, your influence. You, you probably got a little street cred. You, you probably can, can help them out in some areas. You probably know somebody uh, that's looking to, to, to hire somebody. And you're like, hey, you know what? I got somebody that, that, that'll fit that, that, that position. That, that's perfect for that job. Man, let me talk to my boy. Let me talk to my homegirl and, and, and let them know. And let me see if they're interested. I'll get back with you. And we, we, we can hook this thing up. Influence, street cred, words. Hello, are y'all with me? Generosity is, a more, is more than just your money. And when you take your entire life, everything that you are and everything that you own, and you use it to bless people around you, you are experiencing the generous life. And I can make this statement boldly and I can say that generosity is for everybody. Generosity is for everyone. You don't have to be rich to be a giver. You ain't got to be a millionaire, a billionaire, or a thousandaire, or a, a, better yet, a ten dollar heir to be generous. I said this last week. I'm going to say this again. This is our review. Put this in your notes. Awareness always begins with a shift in your perspective. You got to change how you think and how you see. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You got to change. You got to allow God to help you change how you see. Because how you view it is one way. But have you decided or have you asked God to show me how you see it? How do you view this? How do you see this need and how can I feel this need? I see a need, but I feel like I ain't got enough to, to, to feel the need. And so I, I just don't participate. I, I just didn't realize that I could feel the need with my time or pay attention more to somebody. Listen, when folks say, uh, I, I, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I can't complain. And if I did, won't nobody listen. That, right there. That's one of those generous opportunities to say, well, hey, you know, I, I got some time if you you willing to you will if you want to talk, you, you want to, you know, release those complaints. Hey, go, go for it. I'm all ears. Because that might be an opportunity to minister the gospel to someone. Are y'all hearing me? So today. What we want to talk about today, we're going to talk about the second part or the second pathway uh, to the generous life, which is action. Action. Oh, also put this in your notes, that awareness activates generosity. Y'all make sure you put that in your notes if you don't have it already. Awareness activates generosity. Now today, we're going to talk about action. Last week, we talked about awareness, being aware of the opportunities, the generous opportunities, those opportunities to be generous to somebody in those various different ways that I just talked about. We talked about that last week. And so this week, we're going to talk about action. Action. So as we become aware of the needs of those around us, we'll begin to take action. And when we move from awareness to action, miracles happen. Did y'all hear that? 
when we move from awareness to action, miracles happen. Miracles take place. And I believe God has called us to partner with his kingdom work in this day and age by blessing the people around us in various ways. And so I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us uh, to keep our antenna up and show us the opportunities to be generous to people around us uh, throughout this uh, upcoming week and throughout our lives. Hello, somebody. And so last week, we talked about the first step on the pathway to the generous life, which is awareness. And today we're going to talk about that second step. And the second step of activating our generosity. Notice it says right here, awareness activates generosity. And so, as I said, we're going to take talk about the second step of activating our generosity or as uh, the Hollywood directors would say, if the director was on the scene and ready to do it, he would say action. Are y'all with me? And so the desire to be generous is essential, but passion alone, it doesn't make us unselfish. Mm -mm. See, if we, we want to live this, this generous life, we must get active. And in my efforts to become physically healthy, when I look in the mirror and I see something that I want to change, that's a significant first step. But if all I ever do is just look in the mirror and I never change my diet, I never go to the gym, then I'm not going to become a healthy person. It's just going to all be in my mind. But if I don't put forth the action, it doesn't become a reality. It's not going to happen. It won't. It, it, it won't manifest. Are y'all hearing me? So to drop the extra pounds that I'm carrying around, I have to move from a desire to be healthy to acting on being healthy or becoming healthy. I have to go from desire to action. And it, it brings me, it brings to my mind about uh, the scripture in James. James basically tells us that faith without works or faith with no action, it, 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 it ain't going to do nothing. You can have faith all day long. You can have the belief, but until you believe and put that belief into action. See, I could sit here and say, yeah, I believe. But the thing of it is, where's the action to what I believe? I, I can believe, uh, you know, I can believe that I'm going to be healthy. But if I'm not doing my part, if I'm not doing nothing, then God's saying then, okay, I hear you. I hear your faith walk. I hear you. I hear your faith talk. Now I need to see your faith walk. I need to see you applying. It's like G.I. Joe. Knowing is half the battle, but the other half is applying what you now come into contact of knowing. Once you know something, uh, my mama and my grandma used to say, now that you know better, you should do better. And some of us know better, but we just choose not to do better until we get caught or until something happens and then we, we want to try to do better. But James says, do you believe that there is only one God? Good. The demons also believe and tremble with fear. You fool. Do you want to be shown that faith without actions is useless? How was our ancestor Abraham put right with God? Through his actions, he offered his son Isaac on the altar. Watch this. If you go back in, I believe it's in Genesis. Uh, when Abraham was, when God gave Abraham and Sarah the promise 
that they would have a child. Sarah was right at, I think Sarah was like 99 and Abraham was at 100 when they conceived Isaac. Now, Faith, he was probably like in his 40s, 50s, maybe something like that when he received this promise. So he probably was thinking, oh, yeah, OK, well, it's good. Yeah, you know, it's going to happen, you know, you know, right around the corner. So, or, you know, and God said it in God's way. God said, now it's going to take a little time because I, I, I need to see your level of faith. I, I, you know, it's like. I'll believe it when I see it. That's how some people's faith really is. Their faith is not, I'll, I, I believe it before I see it. Their faith is, I, I won't believe it until I see it first. Then I'll believe it. But God operates on the opposite. God wants us to operate by faith. He wants us to walk by faith, not by our natural sight. Not by seeing it first, then believing it. God wants us to believe it, and then it'll manifest for us and everybody else to see it. But watch this. In Genesis, uh, God gives Abraham and Sarah a promise of, of a child being Isaac. And so Isaac is born. Uh, Abraham and Sarah is, 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 is basically in their hundreds. Right? Just imagine that in this day and time that uh, Fox 45 or uh, your local news channel comes on and reports about a hundred and something year old man and a uh, hundred and something year old couple has their first child at a hundred and some years old. You're going to be like, what in the world? The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So I believe it can happen if God wants it to happen. And so he gives them the promise. Isaac. Now watch this. Then God says, I got to test your faith. Remember, I'm, I'm just trying to line it. I'm putting all this in perspective because uh, that is this is what we're in our year. HTC, we are in the year of faith. Our faith will arise. Like never before. And so it's going to be like Abraham. We're going to be God's going to test your faith in some areas like he did with Abraham. So he gets the promise. And so, so God says, OK, I need to see, uh, is your faith in the promise or is your faith in the one who provided the promise? Oh, y'all don't hear me. So God says, listen, is your faith in the blessing or is your faith in the blesser? Where's your faith? I got to test your faith because you, you've been so good and so patient and so faithful to get the blessing. Finally, it has come to pass and you have the blessing. Now, is your faith tied into the blessing? Or if I ask you to give me the blessing back so that I can give you more, are you willing to freely give? Woo! My God. Are you willing to freely give up what you've been waiting for that took so many years and months and took all this time and, 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 and you done went through hell and high water to get the blessing. And now God says, if I ask for it back, are you willing to freely give it back to me? And if not, then that's where your faith is. Your faith will be tied into the blessing rather than being tied to the blessed soul. And so in Genesis, it goes on to tell us that uh, when when God tests Abraham's faith, he says, listen, I need you to sacrifice for me. Oh, sure. Man, no problem, God. I ain't got no problem with that. Man, listen, you 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 done blessed us with our child and our old age. Man, listen, I, I ride or die, God. I'm I, I'm down. Whatever. What, what what is it? He said, okay. He said, I want you to get some wood. Uh, uh, I want you to to prepare a uh, a sacrificial offering. I need you to get all the supplies, everything that you need. He said, but don't worry about the sacrifice. He said, I'll take care of that. 
Okay. Abraham goes, he starts getting everything together. And so he's getting all the stuff together, getting it ready for the sacrifice. And God says, listen, I need you to take the boy and, and I need you to go to a place. I'm going to show you where to perform this sacrifice. All right? Abraham doesn't know that it is a test of faith. And watch this. He doesn't know until a certain point in the book of Genesis. So they get to the place, they get to the mountain where he's going to sacrifice Isaac. But here it is. Abraham didn't catch it. Isaac caught it. Isaac said, they was traveling. Isaac said, hey, dad, listen, can I ask a question? Yeah, man, what's up? We, man, you know, you, uh, what, son? Because God blessed us in our old age to have you. Man, I'm just so happy to, to, to be with you and, and spend some time with you. And, and, and this quality time, this father and son bonding. Yeah, what, what, what's up? What's up? What you got? And, and Isaac said, listen, I, I, I see the wood. I see the 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 the, the, the coals and and the fire and, and I see the string. I see a knife, but I, I, where the sacrifice? If we going to make a sacrifice, where's the sacrifice that we going to offer up? And Abraham says, "The Lord will provide." This is where he gets the name El Shaddai. He is the supplier. He is, he is the God of more than enough. He shall supply all our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so Isaac say, man, something funny about this, man. We got all this stuff and they ain't got a sacrifice. I ain't, I don't know. I, he said, but you know what? Dad know what's best. God know what's best. I'm just going to go with it. And so they reached the mountain and in the scripture, it tells us, it says, Abraham tells uh, uh, the, 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 the people that, that he brought with him, the, the servants that he brought with him. He said, listen, he said, y'all stay here with the donkeys. He said, me and the boy are going to go up to the mountain and worship and we shall return. He didn't say, I, I know I got to go up here. And uh, I, I got to uh, I got to go and uh, sacrifice my son and I ain't coming back. No. The faith test, it kicked in. When he said, me and the lad are going to go worship and me and the lad will return. He got to sacrifice Isaac, but by faith. Are y'all hearing me? Before he even went up to the mountain, he said, "We going me and the boy coming back." He ain't say, "I right, y'all wait here and, and I'll be back." He said, "No, we I'm, I'm coming back with my son." He said, "Now I don't know what God got going on, but God said that He was gonna supply what I needed. He was gonna supply the sacrifice." So he said, "All right." I, I'm, I got faith in God that he's going to take care of this. And, and I got the faith that God is going to allow me to come back down here with my son. So by faith, I'm putting my faith into action. Me and the boy, we're going to return. We're going to go up here and worship, and then we're going to come back. We, not I. This is how our ancestor Abraham was, was, was put right with God through his actions. Abraham was a man of faith, but he was also a man of action. He put his faith in action. And James says, do you want to be shown that faith without action is useless? I got to, I got to go. I got to get going. If we want to become generous people, we have to do generous things and do them on purpose. So here's my question for those of you all that are watching. Here's my question uh, for you today. Uh, what are you doing to be gracious? What is it in your life that you are doing to be gracious? Are you being generous uh, and gracious with your time, with your, your words of encouragement, your thoughts, 
uh, all of that. What are you doing to be gracious? And what are you going to do today and the rest of the time that you are here on earth? What are you going to do that blesses somebody else, that blesses another person? You see, something unique happens once we develop from just desiring to be generous to acting generous or acting generously. There's one thing to, man, if I had that million dollars, boy, I could show, donate, so-and-so, so-and-so. I could show, help fix up so-and-so, so-and-so. I could show, do this. If, if I had this, if I had that, well, what are you doing with what you got? Are y'all hearing me? What are you doing with what you have? The little bit, the lot, whatever it may be. What are you doing with what you have right now to be a blessing to somebody else? See, we start to see opportunities everywhere when we go from desiring to be generous to acting graciously. And you might notice this same phenomenon uh, happening. Let me give you this example. Uh, have you ever purchased an automobile? Have you ever purchased a vehicle? And, and I, can, I can literally, uh, I can equate to this. I, 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 can, I, I can attest to this, that uh, when we bought our Nissan, and, and I call it Shirley. We, I don't know what it is, but we, we named all our cars. Our last car was Willie, dude, it was a uh, Ford Expedition. Uh, man, I, Willie was good to us. And so um, I, I didn't go to the dealership to uh, trade Willie in because I liked Willie. Um, I was going because they, they had given me this notice saying that I had won that big check. Y'all know, like publisher clearing house. You know, you just stand there, take the picture. You got that big old check you holding. They take two, three people to hold the check. Yeah, I was going to get my check because I spent almost the whole day just sitting around waiting at the dealership and ended up, got the big check because the big check was applied to Shirley. Shirley is the Nissan that we have now. But have you ever experienced this phenomenon that you go and you purchase a new vehicle? And it's interesting that as soon as you buy that new car, it seems like Everybody on the road is driving the exact same vehicle. Anybody ever experienced that besides me? Because I, 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 I have experienced this phenomenon not just once, not just twice, but I, I experience it very frequently. That it seems like when I get something that I see it everywhere. And I'm like, oh. It's like when we bought Shirley and we came came back uh, and came back home, it was like maybe a week or two, you just start seeing Nissans pop up all throughout the community. Different types, different, uh, different uh, 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 models, but they were all Nissans just popping up. Boop, boop, boop. And then we would start seeing the same make and model like Shirley everywhere. And it got to the point, this is why I call her Shirley, because I'm old school, those of you that don't know, maybe you are familiar with an old school song, and it's called, I forgot, I don't forgot who, who wrote it, but the song, I think it's entitled Woman to Woman. And so uh, she, uh, it's about a married woman and her husband is uh, having an affair or cheating on her. And so rather than the, the 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 wife going to the mistress and and having this cat fight as we seem to do and and all of this and want to jump on the she picks up the phone very maturely and she she says uh she said Barbara this is Shirley <laughs> are y'all hearing me so that's why I named her Shirley because for every other Nissan Central that I see that looks like Shirley I say Barbara this is Shirley. Well, you see, she goes on to tell her uh, the car that he drives. She said, 
bought that. The clothes that's on his back, the clothes that he wears, she said, I bought that. Oh, y'all don't hear me. So surely God provided. God gave us surely. And so uh, when I experience this, uh, this phenomenon, uh, the psychologists, uh, they call it the frequency illusion. Put this in your notes. Psychologists calls this phenomenon that when it seems like you encounter or see something uh, and you see you think that you're seeing everybody else with the same thing that you got right around the time that you get it. Psychologists uh, call it frequency illusion. Pastor K, what is frequency illusion? What is that? I'm glad you asked. It is a cognitive bias, or better yet, it is a mental action in which after noticing something for the first time, there is a tendency to see it more often, leading someone to believe it is a high frequency occurrence. In other words, it occurs when increased awareness of something creates this illusion that it appears more often. Make that make simple sense, Pastor K. That, that was good and very educational, but I, make that make simple sense to me. All right? The frequency illusion is simply this. It, it is a concept or a thing you just found out about suddenly seems to pop up everywhere. So everybody didn't buy the exact same vehicle that you did on the same day and at the same time that you did. They didn't they didn't uh buy the exact same vehicle that you just purchased. No. Those vehicles was already on the road. The thing is or the frequency illusion that you have is you just didn't see them until you purchased your car. It's your brain now adjusting to notice essential things to you. Things that are essential. Awareness to you. And the same thing is true when it comes to generosity. Once we start living generously, our brains will search for more opportunities to be generous. Oh man, that's cool. That's cool stuff right there, ain't it? When we pray, the Holy Spirit helps us. And when we activate our generosity, our brain assists us as well. It seems so simple, doesn't it? I know, I know. Put this in your notes. Generous people do generous things. Generous people do generous things. Why do so many of us desire to be generous? We all have that desire. We all want to be generous in some shape, size, form, fashion, somehow, some way. We all want to be generous. Yet few of us demonstrate generosity in this world. And so there is a story in the Gospels that might help us answer this question uh, of why or why do we desire to be generous, but yet we don't demonstrate or yet few of us demonstrate generosity in the world. And so, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bible app uh, and you're ready, Get your pens, get your paper, get your notepads if you don't already have it out. And uh, let's do this. Turn with me to Matthew, Matthew. Matthew chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Let's harvest the word of God together. This, when evening arrived, his disciples came to him saying, this is an isolated or deserted place, and the hour is already late. <clears throat> Excuse me. Send the crowd away so that they can go into the village and buy food for themselves. 
But Jesus replied, they don't need to go anywhere. You give them something to eat. Then the disciples said to Jesus, oh, oh okay. Uh, we have here only five loaves and two fish. And Jesus says, bring them here to me. He replied, bring them to me. Then he instructed the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and two fish, meaning he took five loaves of bread, two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks, gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. He gave thanks and he broke the loaves. He gave them to the disciples who in turn gave them to the crowds. Look at verse 20. They all ate and were satisfied. In other words, they all ate and they all were satisfied. And the disciples picked up the broken pieces left over and 12 baskets was full. Wait a minute. Hold on, Pastor K. All we got is five loaves of bread and two fish. And out of this, we done fed everybody. It says, not counting the women and the children, there were about 5,000 men who ate. So 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children, we done fed them off of five loaves of bread and two fish, and then turned around, we done picked up 12 baskets full of leftovers? What? What's going on here? Well, Scripture says, as it starts to get late in the day, the disciples come to Jesus with a problem. Jesus, we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. Jesus, we got a problem, man. We got a problem. They, they noticed that it was starting to get dark, right? And the people, they have ate spiritually, but they ain't ate nothing naturally. They bellies growling. Some of them belly touching their back. They sitting there in church talking about, man, that was an awesome word. Boy, God, man, Jesus, really, man, he really taught us. Man, he taught us some principles, but boy, I'm hungry. My, my spirit is full, but boy, my belly is touching my back right now. I'm hungry. And so the disciples noticed this and it, it was getting dark and they realized that the people haven't ate dinner and, and the disciples are concerned that the crowd will have to travel at night to get fed naturally at home. Now you see, let me help you out. Let me, let me, let me help you understand the context and understand the scripture. See, traveling back then in Jesus's day, traveling at night in a desert or a desolate area with limited vegetation was very dangerous back then. So when the disciples come to Jesus with this problem, Houston, we got a problem. Jesus, there's a problem. Jesus, we got, we, we got a problem. Got an issue. We 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 got we got we. Uh, I need to make you aware of something. Listen, the disciples are not complaining, nor are they being petty, but they are doing quite the opposite. They identified a legitimate need impacting a large group of people, and we would expect Jesus at this point to say something like, "You know what? Yeah, y'all right. You know it is getting dark. You know people." People done, 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 the multitudes done, done grouped up out here, man. They, they, they have spent the, the, the time to listen to what I have to say. They've been very engaging. Uh, they, they, their spirits have been very hungry. I have satisfied them with the word. Uh, and now we need to feed them uh, or let them go to their house so they can get something to eat and come back tomorrow to this, to this next uh, training and teaching session, this next revival, this, this next camp meeting, uh, you know, we, we expecting Jesus to say something like that. So we expecting Jesus to say, yeah, let, let's send them home to make sure that they get what they need. Or, or, or maybe the disciples thought Jesus would do some sort of miracle 
to make sure everybody had the food that they needed and as well got home safely. So the disciples did what we who believe in Jesus are taught to do. They identified a need and they brought it to Jesus. The Bible tells us that that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do as believers, as, as disciples of Christ, that we're supposed to identify the need and we're supposed to bring it to Jesus. In other words, the Bible tells us to do this according uh, to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, right? Oh, you don't know that scripture? Oh, it says, give all your worries and cares to God for what? He cares about you. So all your worries, your concerns, your issues, your needs, we're supposed to give all that to God for he cares about us. All right? Makes good sense, right? Uh-huh. Watch this. When you identify a problem or a need, you pray about it and you bring it to Jesus. That's what we're taught to do. But watch this. Jesus' response to the disciples is confusing. And listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, they don't need to go. Mm -mm. Don't send them away in the dark. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't have them out there wandering in the wilderness and, and, and all that. No, no. He said, he said, they don't need to go. He said, you give them something to eat. Wow. Watch this. The disciples come to Jesus with a problem and Jesus tells the disciples to solve it. He doesn't perform a miracle just yet, nor does he give the disciples a solution to the problem. Instead, he puts the responsibility back on the disciples, and the disciples respond precisely how we do in some of our situations. All I got, all, all I have, I ain't got a lot, but but. But the little bit that I do have, all I have is, is only five loaves of bread and need two fish. And Jesus puts this responsibility back on the disciples. And yet their first response is to make sure that he understands their limitation. How many of us have done this? How many of us have put limits, put God in a box? of limitation and so we tell god you know yeah that, that, that moses said uh yeah going to talk to pharaoh sounds good but but i i, I stutter i got a speech impediment I, I i i'm not the one and god said okay i'll send aaron your brother to go with you and he'll do the talking for you you just perform the miracles that i want you to perform and let aaron do all the talking limitation they're talking about loaves and fish in this story, but really what the disciples are saying is what many of us say even today. We ain't got enough. We, I, I don't have enough. I ain't got enough. Have you ever felt this way before? You see a problem in the world today. You see a need in your neighborhood. You identify an opportunity to be generous in your community. And then the first thought that pops up into your mind is, I don't have enough. I want to be a blessing and I want to give, but I don't have enough. I, I, I want to do my part and I want to be generous, but I don't have enough. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough influence. I ain't got street creds like that, Pastor K. I, I, I ain't got the influence like that. No, you've influenced somebody in their life. You just don't realize it because you haven't been aware of it. Uh, we identify opportunities to be generous, yet we allow our limitations to keep us from the action. Are y'all hearing me today? It's time. I, I just I heard this Holy Spirit to say to somebody, this is the year to take the limits off. This is the year for you to take the limits off of God and to take the limits, good God Almighty, to take the limits off of your 
faith. God says, take the limits off of me and take the limits off of your faith. You have limited your faith. You've limited the expectation of what God wants to do in and through your life. You have limited God and says, yeah, I know God, I know that you can do it. If you did it before, you can do it again, but you have limited God in only doing it one way. You've limited God coming through the front door when he's ready to kick in the back door. You have limited God from coming in through the window, and that's all that you expect is God to bless you through the window. You don't expect God to bless you to be a blessing to somebody else. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Good God Almighty. I, I, I'm trying to get through this, but God is saying, take the limits off of me and take the limitations off of your faith. You have the faith, but yet you have limited your faith. You're limiting your expectations of what God can do for you. This is the year of faith. Faith will arise. We identify the opportunities to be generous, and yet we allow our limitations to keep us from the action. So this is the answer to the question that I asked earlier. Why does our desire to be generous not translate it or put into actual actions of generosity? And I believe that the real reason is that we allow our limitations to stop us. We are allowing limitations to hold us back. But Jesus doesn't let his disciples off the hook so easily here. He doesn't say to them, you know, you're right. I guess there are too many people and yeah, five loaves of bread, two fish, 5,000 men, and we ain't even counted the, the, the women and the children. Yeah, you, you're right. Yeah, we ain't got enough food. Instead, he gives them a precise instruction. I told y'all, Jesus is both a person and principle. He gives them a principle. He says, he says, bring what you got to me. He said, bring it to me. Jesus tells the disciples to give him the five loaves of bread and the two fish, which is all that they have to feed a crowd of almost 20,000 people. And the disciples aren't wrong when it comes to their assessment of the situation. They don't have enough food to feed 20,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. But watch this. The disciples make this mistake. They are looking at the limitations instead of the limitless Lord. Mm. They so caught up in the limitation of what they ain't got enough of. They're so focused on the not enough that they fail to see the God of more than enough. Are y'all with me today? Notice what happens when the disciples look past their limitations and they bring what they have to Jesus. He instructed the crowd to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish and he looked up to heaven. He gave thanks, attitude of gratitude broke the loaves and he gave them to the disciples who in turn gave them to the crowds. Everybody ate. Everybody, they didn't just eat. They ate till they, they had enough to, to satisfy their hunger. They had more than just the Snickers. <laughs> Are you hearing me? The commercial says Snickers satisfies your hunger. They all ate and were satisfied. They had more than just the Snicker to satisfy their hunger to the point where it says, and the disciples picked up the broken pieces left over and they filled 12 baskets full. They had overflow. They were able to not only reach the need of the people right where they are, but they were able to send the people off with more 
than enough. Not counting the women and the children, there were about 5,000 men who ate. I don't know about you, but that's amazing. That's awesome. And, and something miraculous happened. Jesus does what the disciples could never do on their own. But he doesn't do it. Watch this. He doesn't do it until the disciples take the step of action. Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. You hear the director say, quiet on the set. Action. Is it possible Jesus has impressive things that he wants to do in the world? Is it possible that Jesus wants to take our effort and multiply it in ways far beyond what we could ever dream, think, or better yet, imagine? Is it possible that Jesus wants to do all of these things, but he's waiting on you? He's waiting on me. He's waiting on us to take the first step, action. I love this quote from St. Augustine. It says, without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. God is waiting on his people, us. And listen, I ain't just talking about believers. I'm not just talking about the disciples of Christ. I'm talking about humanity as a whole. God is waiting on people. He's waiting on humanity to move from a desire to be generous to performing generosity through action. Just as he did with these five loaves and these two fish. Jehovah God wants to multiply our efforts when we take a step towards generosity. If I was going to put this into a, a formula for you, I, I would put it into something like this. I would say what we have. Plus who God is. Equals enough. You say that again. What we have, I don't care if it's a little, I don't care if it's a lot, what we have plus who God is equals enough. Yes, it is just that simple. If we have the faith to look past our limitations and bring what we have to God, he will use our generosity to change the lives of people around us. And it doesn't just change the lives of other people. This type of faithful generosity changes our life as well. Not only does it bring us closer to the heart of God, it even helps us physically. Watch this. According to a study that was done by the Stony Brook University School of Medicine in New York City, generosity lowers your blood pressure. Generosity lowers your risk of dementia. What is dementia? Your loss of memory. Generosity lessens your anxiety as well as your depression. So you want to know how to get out of that that, that state of anxiousness, you want to know how to deal with and get out of that depressive state, be generous to somebody. See, generosity reduces your cardiovascular risk. It reduces you from having heart disease, heart attacks, things of that nature, and it increases your overall happiness. These physical changes occur in the generous person and it affects the recipient of generosity. When you are, when the quality of your kindness is given and reflected in your giving to somebody, it's contagious. Oh, whoo! Generosity is contagious. Activating our generosity makes everything better. Put that in your notes. 
activating our generosity activating your generosity makes everything better and that is the bottom line and no i'm not stone cold steve austin but god says so activating your generosity makes everything better the requirements for generosity are simply this put this in your notes identify an opportunity Take action. Identify an opportunity and take action. I had an accident and my hip was broken in so many pieces. I have two rods in my hip. She's an angel among us. If you watch her in the bread company, everyone comes in to see Catherine. You know, we sell the bread, but I feel like there are some people who specifically come with prayer requests, and uh, I go pray for them. One day when we were sharing, she said she was in need of a different car, that her car was needing expensive repairs. I had been saving money, but uh, I knew it wasn't enough, so I knew I would take a few years to save for it. So a couple of months later, I went in and I said, Catherine, how's your car fund coming? And she said, I gave it all away. And I looked at her and, and she said, there was a widow in need, and I gave her the $5,000. I struggled a lot when I gave that money. And uh, I said, I feel okay, but uh, do you think I did the right thing? I mean, I cannot give what I don't have, so I just give what I had. I was shocked, and so I come home and I tell Pete that we needed to help Catherine with her car fund. He looked at me and he said, no, I think we need to buy Catherine a car. And I said, okay, great. Pete called Scott and said, do you know Catherine Great Harvest? And he said, yes, he did. Pete said, well, we'd like to buy her a car. He asked Pete, do you want to use your new car? And it just hit him right in the face. Why would he ask me that? Of course I would want a used car. That's good enough. He just paused for a moment and he said, I want a new car. And he said it was silent on the phone for a few seconds. And Scott said, whoa, I want to help. And so he pitched in some. So she came to the bakery and uh, she asked me, if you were to buy a car, what kind of a car would you like? I said, Debbie. I'm not really planning to buy a car, but she said, oh, just tell me. And she said, I'd like a SUV cruise control. And she said, I'd like a light color. And we called Scott and he said, I think I've got the perfect car. So Pete said, can we deliver it tomorrow? So we have the bread company owner and his family, Scott and his family and our family and Catherine sees us all coming in, and she's just all excited to see everyone. And uh, I went to give them hugs, and I said, what's Pete doing here? I did have the, the biggest idea. When I went out, <laughs> and so we walked her over to the car. We said, Catherine, this is your new car. So, oh, I said, for me, this is for me. I said, oh, I, I knew God had many cars, but I didn't know he had a new one for me. So, God had new cars <laughs> for me. We all stood there in tears as we saw the joy on Catherine's face and we got to be a part of it. And the joy of that was unbelievable. It felt 
so right. It was such an excitement to drive it. We told Catherine that we would like this to be confidential. But I kept running into people who would say, I heard what you did for Catherine. It wasn't even us, it was Catherine. It all started with Catherine giving of what she had to a widow to help her, and it just continues on. Generosity begets generosity. We don't give in order to receive. We give because it's the nature of Jesus Christ. He gave us his life. So we, we have the, the DNA of Jesus Christ of giving. <laughs> yeah, so. This is one story I will never forget in my life. The, the main idea or uh, the big idea for this lesson today, as we become more aware of the needs around us, we can be more generous to others. And so here's the million dollar question, HTC. How do we do it? Pastor K, you know, we, 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 got, we, we ain't got a big budget. We don't have a mega church. Uh, we don't have a mega church budget. Uh, how do we do it? How do we move from a desire for generosity to putting generosity in action? How do we do it, Pastor K? How are we going to do it as, as, as a corporate body? How are we going to do it? Now, listen, there are multiple answers to that question, but I want to share a, a one action step with you today. And I believe that if we take this action step, we will see God move in powerful ways. Are y'all ready? Are y'all with me? If you want to activate your generosity, here it is. Here's the action step. Start small. Bible tells us, despise not the day of small beginnings. Don't, don't, don't just look at it and say, oh, this is this little bit that I got. It, it, it you know, oh, nah, I'm not going to put my two cents in, literally. No, it's, it, 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 it ain't even going to put a dent in the budget. Yeah, it will. Because if you give it to God, not grudgingly, but generously, with a happy heart, freely and willing. Give it to God. Watch what he can do. He can take your natural. And when he puts his super on your natural, uh, you'll be able to enjoy this season that we're in. You'll be able to joy, enjoy the season of rest. We're in a sabbatical year. We're in a year of rest. And listen, I can't wait. I can't wait till that, that, that the new year on the Hebrew calendar hits 5783 in September. Because y'all don't know, but I'm going to just give you a spoiler alert. We're in a seven year sabbatical. This has been a seven year, this is the completion of a seven year cycle. And when it comes to a full completion of that seven year cycle seven times seven is 49 we're in that 49 and in the year the hebrew calendar year five seven eight three we hit five zero we hit the year we hit a jubilee year i'm gonna tell y'all more about that but i just wanted to give you that spoiler alert start Oh, that's it. All we have to do is start with something simple and small. 
And here's the best part. If you are faithful, he says, if you're faithful over a few things, if you're faithful with the small things, God will provide or keep providing you with more significant opportunities. Listen, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 22, it says that the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. How, Pastor K? Because they start small and they're faithful with the small things and they give it to God and God keeps providing over and over and over one significant opportunity after another. Listen, if you just start right where you are and you don't allow your limitations to keep you from giving what you have to God, whether it's your time, whether it's your thoughts, whether uh, it's your, your, your stuff, your belongings, whether it's your money, all of that, if you don't allow your limitations to keep you from giving what you have to God, and you trust him to multiply your faithful efforts, you will then move from a desire to be generous or a desire for generosity to living and acting a life generously. I, 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 I can promise you this. I can promise you that the results will be more than you can imagine, think, or dream if you do this. But, yep, I got to put that, I got to put that, that stipulation in there. I got to put that warning in there. You have to be willing. Remember our definition for generosity, a heart that is willing to give. If you ain't willing to give God what you got, better yet, if you ain't willing to give him your best, that's all, really, that's all he asks is that, from your heart that you give him your best, your best effort. Give him your best in faith. Give him your best financially. Give him your best. That's what he did. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his best. He gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but will have everlasting life. I like the quote from Henry Ford. Henry Ford said, he said that faith without action is a delusion. Mm. Did y'all hear that? Henry Ford says, faith without action is a delusion. What's a delusion, Pastor K? It's an illusion. It's a fantasy. If you if you got the faith, but you don't have the action, you don't put that faith into action. It's basically just an illusion. It's just a misbelief. And pretty soon you're going to think and believe that when folks start talking about faith, you're going to think and believe that it can't happen because it didn't happen for you because you didn't believe you didn't put your faith in action. and so. Henry Ford says that faith without action is a delusion. Faith does not wait for miracles, but produces them. Woo! That's good right there. Faith does not wait for miracles, but produces them. And if you think you can, or if you think you cannot, either way, you are right. Either you can or you can't. Faith does not wait for miracles, but produces them. And your faith without action is 
your face with no action. Are y'all hearing me? It's useless. Show me your face with no action. Then turn around and show me somebody's just their action and no faith. Faith and works, meaning action, go hand in hand. You can't separate it. You either got the faith to expect the unexpected and apply what God says. When God said bust that faith move and it don't make sense to your natural thinking, it don't make no sense to the natural understanding when you share your vision and you share uh, your dreams with somebody else, it don't make a lick of sense to them because they looking at you and saying, Boy, you ain't even got a, a job, let alone you, you ain't got this, that, and the other. How, how you expect that to happen? By faith. And I'm going to step out on faith because God says, take the limits off my faith. It's time to bust the faith move. What don't make sense to you and it sure don't make sense to others. It makes perfect sense to God. That's when that's when you bust in the faith. That's when you stepping out on faith. Are y'all hearing me? Listen. Henry Ford says, faith without action is a delusion. Faith doesn't wait for miracles, but do so. If you think you can, I think I can, I think I can. Y'all remember that? Oh, nursery rhyme, the little train or the little car or something that could. I think I can. I think I can. Then there's us, those of us who sit and say, I can't. I can't do it. I don't have enough. I can't be a blessing. I can't. I can't give. I can't give tithes and offerings because. I ain't got no money, but you can give tithes through your time, two hours, 40 minutes. That's 10% of 24 hours. Somebody that's a mathematician, do the math for me, make sure I'm correct on that. But I believe 10% of 24 hours is two hours and 40 minutes. I, I understand. I've been there, done that. Wanted to to, to sow uh, certain certain uh, faith seeds into the ground and just didn't have it. But my heart, God knew my heart. God saw the intent of my heart. He knew that I wanted to do. It. And by my faith, putting it into action, even though I didn't have it to give. As God blessed it. Little here, little there, I blessed it. I, I put it in the ground. I sold it. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Listen, I want to end with the prayer that I introduced last week. Listen, those of you all still with me, those of you still watching, listen, pray this with me. HTC, pray this for yourself as well. Pray this for our church and for those and for the Christians everywhere. Listen, Lord Jesus, teach me to be gracious. Teach me to serve as you deserve. Teach me to give and to not count the cost. Teach me to fight and not to heed the wounds. Teach me to labor and to not seek to rest. To give of myself and not ask for not their reward. Not one reward except the bonus of knowing that what I'm doing through my life, I'm doing 
your will. I want to experience the joy that comes from being generous. I ask that today an opportunity to be helpful will come my way. Not only will it come my way, but I will recognize it when it does. And not only just recognize and be aware of it, but I will have the courage to jump in and give. Yeah, I, I, I know we have messed up y'all. We've messed up folks down through the years with the scripture in Luke, uh, 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 I believe it's Luke chapter six. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give back to you. We, we mess folks up with this and we've made a, 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 a financial money giving doctrine out of that but when you read the previous verses you'll understand the context of what Jesus is saying to give he's talking about give forgiveness and forgiveness will be given back to you give love deal with those grudges deal with all of that stuff you've been harboring bitterness and anger all over, all through the years and down through the years Give forgiveness and forgiveness shall be given back to you. So Lord, we ask that you help us and that you teach us to have the courage to jump in and give so that it shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Overflow. in our lives so that we may be a blessing and overflow somebody else's life and that they can be a blessing and it overflows into somebody else's life and it just keeps going and we sign seal and deliver this request in the name of your son Jesus Christ Yeshua Messiah in his name we say Amen Amen Amen. Listen, I, I wasn't going to uh, do this. I wasn't going to do this. I was going to leave this slide out during till we finish uh, this series and the next series that we're going to start. But I, I just feel that I just feel led not to. Not today, anyway. Listen, HTC, y'all already know the drill. You know how we do. Y'all know what to do. Y'all know about tithes and offerings. Y'all know the four ways to give. Listen, as somebody that's watching today, you have the ability. You've been looking for an opportunity to be generous financially. And you just trying to find how, who, what, when, where. Listen, you can make a financial contribution. One of four ways here to HTC. Listen, you can go to Cash App, dollar sign, HTC Restoration One. You can make that contribution through PayPal. You can go to our website, ChristRestore.org forward slash give, or you can text the word HTC give. Text that keyword HTC give to 77411. Listen, uh, I, I believe Lady Z's already put it up on the screen for you. Uh, Mother Teresa says, and I quote, she says, it's not how much we give but how much love we put into giving. It's the quality rather than the quantity of your giving. And I ain't just talking about offering, though it's tithes and offering time. No, I'm talking about the quality of your giving in time, the quality of your giving in other resources to be generous to somebody. Listen, HTC and those, all our visitors that are with us and watching, 
let uh, let's let giving flow from our hearts and not from this sense of a religious duty and obligation. Yeah, I said it again, duty. But let generosity, let giving spring up freely from the joy of giving. All because God loves a hilarious generosity giver. God loves hilarious generosity. And remember, listen, your generosity and your faithful giving, your time, your finances, uh, your encouraging words, your prayers, keeping us lifted and covered in prayer, uh, doing your part to be generous to others in the community, to be generous to one another here in the body. All of your generosity and your faithful giving, it helps and it continues to help us make a difference through the good news of the gospel. Commercial, well, before I go to a commercial break, I got to go here. That's right, listen. Maybe you've been following and you've been with us for a while and, and, and you've been saying, you know what, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of Harvest of Church Restoration. I want to be a part of HTC. I, I, I want to go from being an HTC peep to now I want to be in the HTC family. How do I do this? Well, here it is right here on your screen. Very simple, very easy. Just text the word member. M E M B R 77411. And we'll get in touch and we'll let you know. We'll give you all the details of how to become what it what, what it takes to be a member of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration. I know you out there. Listen, I'm not looking to take somebody from another church just because you like how I teach and just because you like, uh, you have a certain preference about me. Uh uh, that ain't how it works. We pray that God will send to us and assign us the people who are supposed to be a part of our church restoration. Now, if you are, are coming from somewhere else and you're looking for looking for a church home in this area um, please let, more likely let us know because you don't just have to be a full member here at HTC oh y'all don't hear me see I'm going to up see, we also have a temporary membership as well we have temporary members who uh, have come, with, come to us and been with us for just a little while just passing by just passing through uh, until they got settled in and, and found somewhere or we was able to connect them with a like-minded ministry and place that they can go and serve. Are y'all hearing me? So, just text the word member, M-E-M-B-R 7741. All right, commercial break. So, you're looking for the podcast that will help build your faith, right? Well, check out Keeping the Faith Podcast. Why? Because it was created with you in mind to inspire, motivate, and encourage you to maintain your faith both now and during those difficult moments you're going to have in your life. Keeping the Faith Podcast. It can be heard on Spotify, iHeartRadio Podcast, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Breaker, Castbox, Overcast, Anchor.fm, Pocket Cast, and Radio Public. So tune in and listen to Keeping the Faith Podcast on your favorite listening device today. And remember this. Faith is expectancy. So, what are you expecting from God right now? 
I'm expecting you to subscribe and begin listening to Keeping the Faith podcast right about now. And also, tell somebody else. Follow and like us on Facebook at Keeping the Faith. That's K E E P I N T H A F A T H. Keeping the Faith. Peace and blessings. Yes, sir. Keeping the Faith podcast. That is my podcast that I do uh, for all of my podcast lovers. Listen, if you have not tuned in, signed up and subscribed, Keeping the Faith podcast, man, you are missing a awesome, awesome uh, thing that is going on. You're missing an awesome blessing that God is doing uh, through Keeping the Faith podcast. Listen, we're currently in our new uh new season we're in the fourth season uh i just thank god for what he's done and doing in just a year's time i just thank him how he has taken this uh we started out small and i just doing this just for a couple of people that was like uh uh do you know of any podcast uh that will help inspire and motivate me to keep the faith and that just boom that just hit me uh in my heart and i just said god let's do it then we're gonna call it keeping faith uh because you need faith in this day and time listen we're in uh season four uh we're in our new season uh we're doing a mini series entitled uh that we are calling who are you who 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 my voice is about gone who are you and we've uh we've titled it the chameleon chapter uh, we're in episode two uh, that is currently uh, available for you to listen to uh, on Keeping the Faith podcast. Uh, we're in episode two, and the title is You Are Chosen. Episode one, uh, we talked about the chameleon, and we talked about do not conform. Do not conform to the things of this world. Don't just conform and, and to, to get in where you fit in, if you will. But you need to allow God to transform you and to uh, use you in, in, in various areas and to let people know that you don't conform uh, to, to, to certain things. You ain't going to just hide as a Christian anymore. And this episode, we talk about and tell you and we encourage you to know that you are chosen so tune in listen to keeping the faith podcast on your favorite podcast platform all right and for those of you you may not be all savvy and and listen to podcast it may not be all technically uh tech savvy like that and whatnot but listen i got you covered too i have two books that's currently out on amazon.com Faith or Fear, which is your partner, and Goodbye. Uh, my latest book, Opposition Releases Opportunity, available to you right there at Amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Kelvin Dunn. Uh, all the information and everything is there. Please get you a copy. If you haven't already done so, get, 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 get multiple copies. Be a blessing. You can be generous like that. And you can bless somebody. And if you are a first-time visitor with us, listen, I want to be generous. I want to bless you with an autographed copy of Faith or Fear. Your part. I just make sure you text the keyword welcome to 443 It's right there uh, in the comments. Uh, it's also, I, I think it's in the description too. I'm not for sure. But if not, we'll make sure we get that put in as well. All right, so in the meantime, in between time, yeah, my time with you is up. I want to thank each and every one of you all for taking the time out of your day today, this MLK Martin Luther King weekend. I want to thank you for taking the opportunity to hang out and join me, join me and Lady Z and the rest of the HTC family. Thank you once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you all. Thank you for watching. And being a part of our e-church service today, which was brought to you 
by the Harvest Broadcast, uh, Harvest Temple Ministries production, uh, which is the ministries of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration. Please make sure that you uh, are checking us out, you're following us, keeping up, keeping up with the haps of what's going on, and you're staying informed uh, by following us on social media. We're on Instagram at HTC Restoration. We're also on Facebook at HTC Restoration. Excuse me. <clears throat> also, uh, you can get caught up on all of the previous series and, and uh, teachings and things of that nature that we've done uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, The Harvest Broadcast. Please, please, please do me a great big, big, big favor. Please make sure that you comment. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, you can give us a like. You can give us a dislike. Listen, it, what that does is that helps with the algorithm of basically acknowledging that what you watch, especially if we, if we get thumbs up, if we get likes, um, what it does is that that notifies YouTube and says, hey, this information, hey, this video is very pertinent. Uh, it's very informative and more people need to see and more people need to be involved with this. And so when we get more likes and we get more comments, things of that nature and more views, it tells them that, hey, we need to push this on up the ladder and broaden the perspective of everybody that needs to see this. It's very limited right now, but we need to blow this thing. We need to blow the roof off. And we need to tell the world about Jesus. Can y'all do that for me? Can y'all do that with me? What you want to do is uh, check it out. Comment. Give a thumbs up on your favorite video, your favorite series, all that good, wonderful stuff. But most importantly, at no charge to you, it's free. Subscribe to the channel, peeps. All right? Subscribe. So that way you don't miss any uh, upcoming uh, notifications and that you don't miss any upcoming things that we are getting ready to do in the near future on our YouTube channel only. Might not be on Facebook, might not be on Instagram, might just be something that we're doing on our YouTube channel. So please make sure that you subscribe. So in the meantime, in between time, until the next Harvest broadcast time, on behalf of Lady Z, Myself, Pastor K, and the entire Harvest Temple Church of Restoration family, and all my HTC peeps. I say Shalom, Baraka, peace and blessings to each and every one of you all. And may the Lord watch between you and me while we are absent, one from another, but never. Are we ever absent from the presence of the Lord? For the eyes of the Lord are where, Pastor K, everywhere. They are where, beholding the good and the evil. And so until the next Harvest Broadcast, HTC, y'all know what I'm about to say, y'all know what I'm about to do, and you know where I'm about to be. I'm out. Goodbye. Thanks for watching the Harvest Broadcast. This has been an HTM production. Peace!